All right, what's up, my friends? Buckle up and grab a Snickers. Uh, complete set review for Murders of Karlov Manor. We're about to do the multi card section, which is the largest section in the entire set. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Please support the content. If you enjoy what I'm doing here and you want to see more of it, that's how you do it. All right, it's super easy to do. Hit play, hit like on every video. Helps out a ton. If you missed it, white, blue, black, red, and green are all done. They're all on YouTube. Go watch them on the YouTube, all right? Like those videos too. We're doing a complete set review of every single card in the set for constructed and limited. So buckle up, folks. I want to remind you all also, Bronze to Mythic will be starting uh, Wednesday of the 7th. So we get our draft run going. This is also a Pro Tour set for me. I'll be, I'll be playing in Pro Tour Murders of Karlov Manor in Chicago later in February. So a big Bronze Mythic run for me. We got 10 new Brews happening as well the day before on the release day. Uh, going to be a lot of fun. So lots of new content to do with the new set. Going to be really, really cool. You'll see a bunch of these cards and more in those. But now, let's just go with our first card here in Agroskos Spirit of Justice. Dude, uh, dude got killed, but he still still got to go to work, uh, unfortunately. So, four mana for a 2-4 double strike Vigilance. So, pretty good body. Basically, a 4-4 four, four, uh, has Vigilance also. So, attacks well, blocks well. Whenever it ETBs or attacks, choose up to one target creature. If it's suspected, exile it. Otherwise, suspect it. So, that's huge. All right. So, of course, suspecting means that the creature has menace and can't block. And obviously, some things care about it, like this card. If you have other ways to suspect things, this will just kill them like straight up and then if you have somebody to give us haste this can etb suspect attack exile immediately which is an extremely powerful effect too so this card is quite powerful um i think this card needs a little bit of help for constructed uh as far as like other suspect things happening or um or giving it haste in some way to really make it like a super solid card uh but that being said the rate here is pretty good i think this card definitely has a chance in standard um, you know, Boros Legends also just kind of place to be regardless. Uh, you can suspect your own things too, um, which is kind of nice to give things menace. Uh, also, suspects can't block too, which is important as well. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, very, very decent chance card to see play constructed. Uh, I think it's got got the chops. And then, of course, just exiling things is obviously very, very powerful. In Limited, Windmill Slam. Uh, couldn't ask for a better card in Limited. This card's an absolute slam dunk bomb. Uh, unbelievably powerful. Uh, but Constructed has a good chance to, honestly. So, Spirit of Justice making moves. Alquist Proft Master Sleuth. Nerd! This is our protagonist for the set. Uh, the one who's trying to solve all the crimes. And we have the 3 mana 3 3. Vigilance ETB Investigate. This is a mythic. So, obviously, the floor there is pretty good, right? 3 3 Vigilance that investigates for 3 is totally fine. It's a human and a detective also. But then you can cast the mana cost of Sphinx's Revelation and sack a clue and cast Sphinx's Revelation, which is pretty good. I mean, like, it's kind of weird because Sphinx's Rep doesn't typically play in the same deck as a 3-3 three, three, three mana 3-3, three, three, but, like, the floor here is already pretty good. And then, like, if there's some sort of weird control deck where you can just sit on this, that being said, like, I don't think Sphinx's Revelation on a creature is particularly great. You know, it's not a very consistent thing, and, like, I, I don't know. I, I don't think that part's going to be that important, but I think the, the base rate here is what you're looking for. Uh, and it's pretty reasonable. I think if there's some sort of detective deck in standard, this card could make some moves. Probably not good enough for Constructed, but we'll see. In Limited, another Windmill Slam. Uh, couldn't ask for a better card. Uh, in Limited, but Constructed, maybe. We'll say maybe. Anzrag, the Quake Mole. We have a Mole God. Mole God. Gruel 4-drop, 8-4 creature, uh, which is rather large. Whenever it becomes blocked, you untap each creature you control and have another combat phase, which is not bad, you know. And then it has 7 mana, must be blocked, this if able. Holy moly. This card is certainly fun, obviously. You know, uh, sizing-wise, an 8-4 with no evasion for 4 isn't particularly exciting for Constructed. Obviously, it just, like, dies to go for the throat, whatever it might be. And then, worst-case scenario, I'll, I'll just take eight. Whatever, you know? Or I block it with a 4-4. Four, four, whatever, you know? You gotta have more things also. So, this seems like more of a fun commander card. You, like, put some big crap on it, you know, and do whatever you might want to do with it. Uh, so, more of a commander card than a, than a serious constructed card. Uh, but pretty fun. And Limited of this card's great. I mean, an 8-4 for 4 would just be, like, fine anyway. Uh, and then all the other text on it's good as well. Probably a game winner in Limited for sure. Uh, but beyond that, um, yeah, not really a constructed card. It's fun, though. 
Assassin's Trophy. What? Still a piece of garbage. This card's back. Uh, Assassin's Trophy is a card that everyone loves. It isn't very good. Uh, two mana to destroy anything. Opponent gets the rampant growth. That sort of flexibility can be found in cards that are a little bit more expensive with no drawback. And this sort of efficiency just isn't really necessary. Um, giving your opponents a land is debilitatingly backbreaking. And it even comes in untapped. So like they get to use the mana for things immediately. That is a major, major, major drawback when there are plenty of other ways in green and black to kill things. Um, you know, whatever that disenchant is, that, that kickers to exile things. There's plenty of ways to kill things. That might be a little more clunky, but with no drawback. And the drawback here is just so bad. So fringe constructed playable card. You know, occasionally we'll see a little bit of play as a, as a flexible answer. Uh, but for the most part, we, we know what this card is. You know, this card was first printed... Um, you know, yeah, everyone thought it was second coming, myself included. I got, got, you know, I was like, this card's the best removal spell ever. And it's just mostly unplayable, you know, but fringe play. And then obviously every once in a while, people getting people getting too greedy with their basics. You can play this in eight field of ruins or whatever, which is kind of cute. But yeah, we know what Assassin's Trophy is. In limit, it's obviously much better because it's just a kill spell. But even then, giving your opponent land limit is kind of, is kind of eh too. So it's a fine limited spell. Aurelia, the law above. We have five minutes for a 4-4 Flying Vigilance Haste. Sarah Angel, eat your heart out. It's pretty good stats. Whenever a player attacks with three or more creatures, draw a card. Note that's your opponent also. Whenever a player attacks with five more creatures, and note also it's both players, this will deal three damage to each of your opponents and you gain three life. Oh, it's Helix! So, oh obviously a bomb and limited. Uh, this card is just, you know, Sarah Angel with Haste and Vigilance or, or whatever is just insane. Uh, and some upside. Constructed probably isn't good enough. Uh, I mean, a 4-4 flyer haste for 5 is certainly reasonable and constructed, but, like, kind of gotten past that almost. And maybe you draw a card when you first play it. we kind of cool. But 5 mana is a lot for an aggro deck. For a mid-rangey Boros deck, maybe. It's got a chance, honestly. Uh, but mostly just a limited bomb. Maybe a fringe player in standard. It is an angel, which has some relevance, I suppose. There are some angel things happening in uh, in standard right now uh, with Giada and stuff. But for the most part, I think this is mostly a fringe constructed card and bomb limited. Blood splatter analysis. Uh, that is gross. No, no. Um, Rakdos two drop enchantment when it ETBs three damage to a creature opponent controls. So floor is great, right? Two mana four and ETB. Uh, this is an, an oath of Chandra basically. And then when one or more creatures die, mill a card and then put a blood stain counter on blood splatter analysis. Then sacrifice it if it has five more bloodstain counters on it. When you do, return a creature card and revert to your hand. This is pretty good. You know, like, so floor here. The absolute floor is two mana, three damage to a creature, surveil. Right? Or I'm sorry, just mill. Not, not surveil, it's mill. That's not bad, right? And then also there's some elements of it. It's an enchantment. It adds to devotion. You can orient it and so on and so forth. And then things just die. It counts your stuff and your opponent's stuff. You just keep milling cards. And then eventually, once you get to five, you just get a creature back. So it's just effectively a two-for-one, right? So I'm not sure what deck would want this exactly, and only being able to hit creatures, not planeswalkers or opponents, is a little rough, or even battles, you know? Because uh, your opponent's just not playing any good targets for it. It's just going to suck. Uh, but that being said, this card's pretty good. Uh, another bomb-limited card. Constructed. There's a lot of good Rakdos cards out there, you know? Uh, I don't know if it quite makes the cut. Uh, pretty cool with some sort of, like, Doom Foretold deck, maybe, or Yorian deck, which is kind of cool. Um, it does only count. Yeah, it, it does count. Um, if four creatures die at once to a wrath, it only, only mill once, which kind of sucks. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Feels like mostly a fringe card. Um, but phenomenal limited card, and the floor is pretty high. So if you very deck wants a card like this, you know it's cool. Breakout. I like this card. No war for this card, but I think this card's super sweet. Gruel sorcery. Look at top six cards of your library. May reveal a creature card from among them. If it has mana value two or less, you put it right in the battlefield and it gets haste. And if you don't put it in the battlefield, put it in your hand. So, so getting your mana off this card uh, back immediately is pretty awesome. Uh, so, you know, the problem with an impulse card like this is that, like, you you spend the mana for it and just don't affect the board. Just say go. And it kind of sucks. This one, you get it immediately. And getting haste is awesome, too. So, you're getting, you're getting like, the mana... You're getting your mana back on the creature and giving it haste, which is awesome. And you're getting selection as well. And then later in the game, you can just like possibly get a bomb too. So I think this card's super cool. Uh, I think this card is uh, definitely playable in multiple formats, modern, pioneer, standard. Um, and I think this card is 
just just really cool. Lost the Thanksgiving is excellent. Uh, it's also it's also pretty cool that it triggers prowess as well. So you can like this is a a creature that's also a spell for your prowess stuff. It's like a red green prowess deck. And we have like the adventure prowess creature. It's a new prowess creature in red also. So Thanksgiving cards excellent. Uh, definitely a contender for best in show. Didn't win it obviously, but really really good card. Worse than limited, but still pretty good honestly. Where you just like you know might get a two drop, look for a bomb later. Uh, but yeah, card's great. Big, big fan of this card. Possible cube card. I think this card's a playable player in multiple formats. Up next is Buried in the Garden, which is a four mana enchantment or enchant land. When it ETBs exile non-land permanent, you don't control until it goes away. And then it also is a fertile ground for land. So this is effectively just like Oblivion Ring fertile ground. That's pretty good. Uh, reminds me a lot of Binding of the Old Gods. Uh, kind of similar, you know, four mana, get rid of anything, and then ramp. Pretty powerful, actually. It's also an enchantment. There's obviously there's some green-white enchantment stuff happening in Standard already anyway, thanks to the uh, the Kamigawa sets and so on and so forth. So I think it's hard sneakily quite good in Standard. Um, you know, being able to ramp, being an enchantment, all pretty awesome. Like it a lot. The only fear here is that, like, they can kill the land and get it back somehow with, like, Field of Ruin or whatever. But, uh, yeah, card's really cool. Buried in the Garden. Great limited card also. I think it's excellent. You know, Shades of Binding of the Old Gods. I don't think it's quite as good as Binding is, uh, but it's still very, very good. Binding was excellent too, so. Coerce to Kill. Five mana for a Demir Enchant creature. You control Enchanted Creature, and the Enchanted Creature has base power and toughness of one, death touch, and is an assassin. So, uh, obviously very flavorful card uh, as far as the set goes. This is obviously a phenomenal limited card, right? This is just five mana, kill a creature, and then get a get a 1-1 death touch, which is awesome. Uh, constructed probably costs a little bit too much. I think it costs four if you have a good shot at Constructed, but a five is just far too much. Uh, but um, yeah, just really good limited card. I'm not sure what else to say. Uh, it's a control magic, and then uh, you know, stealing shoulder is kind of cool. It'd be, it'd be a 1-1. Obviously, you still get the abilities and stuff as well when you steal it, which is kind of nice too. So very, very good limited card. Very, very fringe playable Constructed card. Crowd Control Warden. So we have one morph uh, in at common in each color pair. Uh, and this is the Selesnia one. We have five mana for a 4-4. Four, four. When an ETBs or flips face up, put X plus plus some counters on it, where X is the number of other creatures you control, and morphs for five mana, either white or green, which is kind of sweet. This is a great common. Uh, you know, you can hard cast this and make it like a 6-6 six, six or a 7-7. Seven, seven. You can morph it as a huge creature also. Green and white's obviously very, very likely to have tons of things in play. And you can also be like green-black or or blue-white and still play this card too, which is great also. So I think this is a great, great, uh, great common. It's also as it flips, so you can't, you know, kill it response, which is great too. Yeah, love it. Great common. Big fan. Curious Cadaver. Demir, 4 mana, 3-1 flyer. If you sacrifice a clue or turn this from your graveyard to your hand... Uh, phenomenal limited card. Absolutely phenomenal. You play this thing, you block with it, you trade with it, and get a clue and get it back. Constructed, uh, not really good enough. You know, uh, the fact that you have to cast it is just too much. If this was, like, cheap, if it was, like, a 2-1 flyer for two, we'd be, I think we'd be talking. But casting it for four mana is just too much. Unless you have some sort of, like, loop where you're, like, discarding it and then bringing it back over and over again, sure. Uh, but yeah, not really a constructed card, but great limited card. Uh, truly excellent. Deadly Complication. Uh, Rakdos, three mana sorcery. Choose one or both. Destroy target creature. And then you can put a plus muscle counter on target suspected creature you control. And you may have it no longer become suspected. So, kind of a weird card, right? So, obviously, murder's fun. Three mana, murder. That obviously makes it a great limited card. Uh, and then, you, you know, if you have a suspect, you can you can pump it up a little bit and unsuspect it, which is kind of cool and will definitely be relevant and limited. Constructed, much less relevant. This card's not good to construct it, obviously. It's just the, the rate's not good enough, but great limited card. It's a removal spell. A little bit of upside. Good limited card. Detective Satchel. Four mana is it artifact when ETBs investigate twice, which is pretty good. Uh, tap it to make a Thopter with flying only if you sacrifice an artifact this turn. Uh, three artifacts for four mana is pretty cool, honestly, as far as like, you know, artifact D county effects, you know, synergies and stuff. A little clunky for sure. Um, no, not really good enough for Constructed, I don't think, at 4 mana. Uh, but good limited card. You play it, start making Thopters. It's a little slow, but once it gets, gets going, you start drawing cards and making 1-1s, one and uh, that's pretty powerful. So, definitely a solid card. Pretty cool. Dog Walker. Need one of those for Karn. Uh, this is a Boros 2 mana 3-1 Vigilance for 2, which is already a good limited rate. Obviously a limited card. The Disguise cost here is 2 mana. 
so you can unmorph it. When you unmorph it, you get two 1-1 one, one dog tokens. This is another great common. Uh, play it face down, flip it up at some point, get some tokens. You can play it on turn two. Uh, just very versatile, very good rate, good flexibility, playable in a white deck or a red deck, uh, but better in a Boros deck, obviously, but it's great common. Great common uh, for limited, nothing more. A doppelgang. So, uh, any commander players out there? Uh, blue, green, XXX sorcery. For each of X target permanents, create X tokens that are copies of that permanent. Uh, so, if you have a lot of mana and casts, you'll win the game. It's just, that's really all there is to it. Uh, there's not much more complicated than that. How you do so is up to you. Uh, but once you get to eight mana, you're making two copies of two different permanents. So you're getting two and then two. And then beyond eight mana, this card's just like ridiculous. Uh, so yeah, this is definitely, uh, you know, a commander card through and through. In limited, this card's certainly playable. I think you can get up to eight mana limited and cast this card probably win the game. Uh, constructed... If there's some sort of combo that it makes a bajillion mana, this could definitely, definitely be a thing. But this is mostly just a fun commander card. You know, I have a million mana. What do I want to do? Oh, I'll do this. Drag the Canal. Demir Instant. Two mana rare. Make a 2-2 two, two blue-white detective creature token. If a creature died this turn, you gain two, surveil two, and then investigate. So, Flash Bear, which is a decent floor. But most importantly, you play this when something died, and you get a whole bunch of stuff. Now, two mana for a 2-2 two, two that gains two surveils to and investigates is very, very good. It's also a spell, which is kind of nice as well, and an instant. Uh, that being said, it's kind of hard to parse, like, what deck would actually want this card, you know? Um, it's not really for a control deck, because you don't care about a 2-2 two, two that much. You know, so, like, a mid-range deck, I guess? Like, you could, like, cut down a creature and cast this, or make a trade? I don't even know, honestly. Uh, the, the, the rate is reasonable, for sure. Not sure what deck wants it. Um, it's a detective card, which is kind of cool. Uh, it feels a little more like a blue white card for sure, but yeah, uh, obviously a great limited card because like the rate is just phenomenal. But constructed, I'm just not really seeing what we want exactly here. Uh, errata, er, errata, a lot of some, something. You're saying it wrong. Deadly fugitive, Demir. 3 mana, 1, 4, Death Touch. So great stats. That's a great stat line. Phenomenal limited card. Face down creatures you control have A4, turn it face up. If you can't exile it, you may cast the exiled card without paying its mana cost. So, whatever is an assassin you control deals combat damage to an opponent, cloak the top card of that player's library. So, this thing and other assassins get to cloak the cards in your opponent's library, which is pretty sick. And honestly, like, this card's really good if you have, like, a 1-drop assassin and a 2-drop assassin. You just attack and then just, like, start cloaking things, getting two twos out of nowhere. And then this thing can flip them up, uh, even if they're spells, right? So it's like, I hit a divination or whatever. I can flip it up and cast it or leave it as a 2-2, which is kind of cool. Card's powerful, honestly. The stats are really good. I don't know how many good assassins there are in standard, but if there's some some good assassin 2-drop, you just, like, play this in turn 3, attack, and cloak immediately. That's really, really powerful. Um, and it, it is... It, it scales. If I have four assassins and attack with all of them, I can cloak four times. It's pretty powerful. So, pretty powerful card. You know, there are a lot of good three drops in standard, obviously. So, it's kind of like, you know, hard to, to fully parse, you know. Uh, in historic on Arena, there's like that 1-1 one, one changeling for one that can't be blocked. That's kind of cool also. So, yeah. Um, definitely a, a card's a little more powerful than it looks, I think. But pretty powerful card overall. Great commander card, obviously. Phenomenal limited card just by itself. Like a 1 4 death touch for 3 is just like an actively good limited card. And then you add a bunch of text to that, it's great. Uh, but yeah, I think this card is an outside shot constructed for short. Evidence Examiner. This is a 2 mana uh, uncommon Merfolk Simic 2 2. And uh, many combat your turn, they collect evidence 4 when you do investigate. Uh, it's It's okay. You know, uh, it's a bear, worst case scenario, unlimited. And then obviously, if you can just get a clue or two off it, it's pretty great. That being said, this is, you know, a lot of juice for, uh, or a lot of squeeze for not a lot of juice. You know, like, I have to have cards in my graveyard, then I get a clue. You know, if this was just a 2 2 that ETB had made a clue, would it even be that good? Eh, so, more of a good limited card, nothing more. Ezram, Agency Chief. This card's really good. Uh, again, another possible, like, sleeper reward card winner, but I just, just too many cards in this set to, or in this section to have that many awards. We have a 5-mana Azorius 5-5 five, five Flyer. When it ETBs, investigate twice. So that's very good, right? You play it, it dies, I still have two clues in play. Pay one, sacrifice an artifact, it gains your choice of vigilance, 
lifelink, or hexproof to end of turns. So this is basically a six drop, right? Kind of similar to Dream Trawler or other big six drops. You play it, you protect it for a turn, you untap with it, and now you're ready to rock and roll. And the fact that it investigated twice is awesome as well. The problem is that like there's a good limit on, on how many times you can use it, because like how many other artifacts are you making in your blue-white deck? But that being said, this card's a freaking house. Uh, it's huge, it can gain life, it can gain vigilance. Um, you know, wants more artifacts, which creates a fun deck building puzzle. But on rate, this card definitely has a chance in standard for sure. Slam dunk, windmill slam, bomb limited card, obviously. Uh, but yeah, card's pretty cool. You know, play with like Skrelv's Hive or something. It's kind of cool, yeah. So does some cool things. Pretty powerful card. Basically a six drop. Uh, has a chance for sure. Fairy Snoop, the metaphor, a 1-4 flying common. Not too bad. Has disguise three, Demir. Turn it face up. Look top two cards of your library. One to your hand, one to the graveyard. Pretty good. Right, you know, so you morph it and you unmorph it, but six mana overall for cards, a card and a 1-4 flyer. Not as good as some of the other uh, common gold cards, but still pretty good. I think it's a reasonable card overall. It's a detective, puts cards in the graveyard. It's fine. Gadget Technician. This is the Is It Common Multicolor Morph card. 4 mana for a 3-2. When it ETBs or turns face up, make a Thopter token with flying. Uh, this card's great because obviously just casting a 3-2 and getting a 1-1 flyer is very, very good. Getting morph, it's good also. So this is just good on both sides. Good rate, common. Not much more to say. Gleaming Gear Drake. Two mana four, and is it uncommon? One one Drake. ETB investigate. But if you sacrifice an artifact, put a counter on this. This card's pretty good, right? So by itself, you know, it's a one one flyer for one, for two. and investigates, pretty solid. They kill it. You still have some value off of it too. And if you're playing a bunch of artifact stuff, uh, the counters go nuts. Treasures here is the real uh, the real. The real big one. Uh, just play it. Sack treasure, sack treasure, cast a spell. Now you have a 3-3, three, three, which is awesome as well. So I think this card's quite good. We'll see play in multiple formats. Uh, you know, good within soul artifact. Just just a good card. Granite Witness is the blue-white common morph card. Format for a 3-2 flyer of vigilance, which is okay. Uh, let's turn face up to app or untap. This is a card you kind of want to morph rather than cast. Uh, and that being said, it's it's okay. The body's all right. doesn't block super well. So, just fine. You know, solid blue, white, common. Ill-timed explosion. This is a cool one. Is it four mana sorcery, draw two? Then you may discard two cards. When you do, this deals X damage to each creature where X is the greatest mana value among cards discarded this way. So, this card has a lot of potential, right? Uh, in older formats, discard a magma opus. Just deal eight to everything and then have it in your graveyard to get back with Mizzix Mastery or whatever else you want to use, a Gear Hulk. Um, you know, the ability for to Wrath in blue red is pretty sweet. Uh, you know, and then uh, you're just playing some big boom booms in your deck. This is a good way to do that. You can discard a, an Archon of Cruelty or some big idiot to reanimate later. You do it in standard, maybe. You know, you just discard a big boom boom or discard a Traxa, get it back on turn five with a, a Cruelty of Gix. The card's good. I think this card's got legs in multiple formats. Uh, kind of a sweet card. Plays well with Delve cards also. You discard a Treasure Cruise, deal, deal eight. Uh, and then, of course, you know, the floor is you're just drawing to which is not incredible, but certainly reasonable as well. So, pretty powerful card. I think it's a multiple multiple format playable card. And then, in limited, also seems pretty good as well. Card is good. Ill time explosion. Fun card, too. Fun design. Insidious Roots. Super awesome art. Love it. Golgari, two mana, uncommon enchantment. Creature tokens you control have tapped to add mana of any color. And then, whenever one or more creature cards leave your graveyard, make a plant token and put a counter on each plant you control. So, kind of cool, right? If you can just, like, slowly pull cards out of your graveyard one at a time... This just like he's making plans to get bigger and bigger. Uh, kind of sweet, you know. Uh, Blood Guest, you know, uh, Blood Soak Champion, Cauldron Familiar. A lot of ways to trigger this. And then the the token making mana part's kind of cool too. Uh, card's kind of sweet, honestly. For two mana, this is a pretty nice card. This is the kind of card they could see play in multiple formats. Uh, Modern, Pioneer, Historic. Um, a lot of ways to return creatures from the graveyard. You know, kind of undying triggers. Even scam stuff, you know. Uh, card's cool, you know, and again, like, don't just count the fact that, like, every time you make a plant, all your other plants getting bigger is a pretty big deal. Uh, Lord Skitter is super cool. Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, a lot of, a lot of avenues here. Likes card a lot. Super cool. Worse, it's worse than limited, obviously, because, like, it's harder to build around, but this is a pretty cool card for Constructed. I'm, I'm in on this card. This might be a 10 new brew, folks. Look for it. Azoni, Center of the Web. Six mana for a... Legendary Elf Detective. This is a 5-4 Menace for 6. 
what EDBs or attacks you may collect evidence for. If you do, make two, two, one black and green spider tokens with reach and menace. Sack four tokens, surveil two, draw two, gain two. Um, this is a limited bomb, obviously. It does a lot of different things. Constructed, six mana is a lot. Six mana is a lot, a lot, a lot. So I think that that mana value just makes it basically unplayable constructed. But I think in limited, this card's a slam, slam dunk, bomberoni. Um, you know, maybe this card could go alongside the uh, the previous card, the enchantment, uh, because that gives you a way to uh, make extra mana as well as use tokens and get cards out of the graveyard. So maybe you know an outside shot gets constructed. Uh, but slam dunk, limited bomb, fun commandery card. Uh, spiders, creepy. Judith returns the Carnage Connoisseur five out of four, a three four. Very weird Rakdos card. Uh, I don't know how this is a card ended up being Rakdos, but whatever. And if you cast an instant or sorcery spell, choose one. That spell gains death, touch, and lifelink, or make a 2-2 two, two imp when it dies, shock something. Both those are really powerful, uh, right? So I can shock, and I can just kill. Shock becomes, you know, one mana terminate gain two. Uh, and then 2-2 two, two imps that die, that's, that die to deal two are also phenomenal as well. But that being said, like, how many... He, how many spell slinger Rakdos decks are there usually? You know, so kind of weird. Um, oh, I'm sorry, the shock only goes face. I, I misread the card. Uh, still pretty good, uh, but you know, not as good as I thought it was. But still, um, again, but what kind of deck wants this card? I don't know, honestly. Maybe a Grixis deck or something like that. I don't really know. Uh, but yeah, definitely a limited bomb. Obviously, same idea. But constructed, I don't think you're really there. You know, Rakdos Magecraft is kind of awkward. Uh, this card is very, very cute. And the festivities, uh, just, you know, Chain Whirler Death Touch style. Uh, but yeah, kind of fragile. And then also, like, it just costs five. And you just play it and it doesn't do anything yet. So, Kaya Spirits Justice, our Planeswalker of a set. There hasn't really been many good Kaya's, I'm not going to lie. Sorry, card is on Murderer Lookout. Uh, so, Kai's Spirit Justice, 4 mana for a Planeswalker. Most Kai has not been very good. 4 mana for a 3 loyalty Planeswalker with 14 lines of uh, <laughs> of passive text here. Whenever one or more creatures you control and or creature cards in your graveyard are put into exile, you may choose a creature card from among them. Until end of turn, target token you control becomes a copy of it, except it has flying. That's one of those abilities where my brain just turns off. I don't, don't want to listen anymore. Let's read it again. Whenever one or more creatures you control and or creature cards in your graveyard are put into exile. You may choose a creature card from among them until end of turn, target token you control, comes a copy of it, except it has flying. All right, so... Sure. Uh, so you can make a token, and then you can exile a card in your graveyard to make the token to a copy of that card. Uh, is that good? I, I, I don't know. That's a lot of... A lot of hoops, um, you know, but sure. Uh, plus two, surveil two, exile card in a graveyard, which obviously can turn your, can activate your effect there. And then plus one makes a flyer, which is like obviously okay, but not great. Minus two, exile creature you control for each other player, exile up to one target creature that player controls. So kind of like a, an oblivion, a right of oblivion kind of effect also. I can't even process this card, honestly. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't even know. Uh... Headache cards are bad cards. I don't like headache cards. I was a good limited to Planeswalker, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know. The there's so much setup here for a Planeswalker. It's just like so rough. It's probably just not worth the squeeze. Uh, but yeah, someone else can figure it out. Kellen is back. Kellen, Kellen gets around. You know, Kellen is definitely, uh, definitely getting around. Four enough for a legendary creature, human fairy detective. Uh, we have a 3-4 Flying Vigilance, which is decent stats. Whenever it attacks, destroy up to one target artifact. If you control that permanent, draw a card. So you can destroy your own clues and draw, or just kill their stuff. And then you have the adventure here, which is Tail the Suspect, Blue-Green Sorcery. Investigate, play an extra land. So basically explore, put a delayed draw, and then it curves well into the actual creature itself. This card's pretty good. Um, I'm not sure what deck wants this card, you know, some weird blue-green deck or whatever. Uh, but like, you know, turn two, explore. Turn three, three, four, flying vigilance with, with you know, card draw upside. It's pretty sweet. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I think this card has a slight chance uh, for construct, construct, constructed play because it does curve so well into itself. It's obviously a bond-limited card. Uh, but, yeah, I think Kellen is, like, 
he's on the omen paths or something because like you're a planeswalker you can't planeswalk but there's like these portals i don't know how the story works i'm not gonna explain that but but yeah i mean adventure cards are good this is a pretty reasonable card curves into itself uh outside shot constructed but obviously a very good limited card for sure crawl whip cracker whoosh golgari three two reach for two so just good base stats when etbs destroy a target token and opponent controls that's not bad you know, uh, for a limited, this card's great because the stats are really, really good. And constructed, if there's like a lot of playable tokens, uh, this card does a really good job, right? So there's, you know, cards that are making 3-3 tokens or like Call the Herd, whatever, just a bad example. But like, you know, someone's playing a card that like makes a token as its primary function. This just kills it, which is kind of awesome. Uh, so it's also an assassin. A little, little value there for uh, for the, uh, the, Demir, the Demir rare. But um, yeah, you know, kills clues, kills other tokens as well. Uh, again, good rate good ability probably a fringe sideboard card and constructed good limited card uh it does kill rhinos which is kind of cool but um it's also insect for grist which is fun as well so cool card a lot of a lot of, a lot of good little things happening here um and kylox's volt strider this is a weird one mythic is it vehicle point out for a 4-4 you can only crew it uh i lied never mind uh you can crew it by collect evidence collect evidence six or by crewing it for two then whenever it attacks, you may cast an instant or sorcery come among the cards exiled with it. And then uh, if it goes to the graveyard, it goes to the bottom of the library instead. So basically, uh, this is like the machine that can cast spells for free, right? So I find some way to discard Magma Opus or some big, huge, stupid, stupid sorcery or instant. And then I use that to crew this and then attack. I get to cast a spell for free. That being said, uh, this is a you know three mana sorcery speed must attack artifact creature. Um... Oh, it's not for free. I'm I'm sorry. I'm I'm a little sick, folks. This card blows. Moving on. Um, it's not for free. I thought it was for free. I thought that was the uh, the stick on this card. I apologize. Uh, that makes this card very very unexciting. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna move on. That's fine. Kylox, visionary inventor. This is a seven mana. Is it four four? With menace ward two in haste. So. A little protection, but a huge cost. Whenever it attacks, sacrifice any number of other creatures. Then exile top X cards of your library, where X is their total power. You may cast any number of instant and or sorcery cards of among the cards that pay the mana cost. Maybe I, maybe I mix I mix this card with the last card up. Uh, so uh, this thing can cast things for free. You got to sacrifice creatures, uh, which is kind of weird because like, what is a deck would have creatures in it? Uh, this feels like a commander card just through and through. Honestly, um, yeah. I, I was just checking something. I'm sorry. So, uh, yeah. Commander card through and through. It's just so expensive. Uh, honestly, it is what it is. Lazav, wearer of faces. Two mana for a 2 3. Rare. Whenever it attacks, exile a card in a graveyard, then investigate, which is pretty powerful. You know, which, which was ETB also. But um, whenever you sacrifice a clue, you may have Lazav become a copy of a creature. Card exile with it to end of turn. So, obviously, this can work with itself. Uh, where you can like attack, exile a card, get investigate, and then sack the clue and do it. You don't get ETBs here though, so you can't do attracts and stuff like that too. Uh, you know, definitely uh, the kind of card that's like pretty cool. The stats are reasonable. Not sure what else, uh, like what you want to do with this card. It is a card from any graveyards. So you can discard your own stuff, whatever. You can steal your opponent's stuff. Uh, but again, the, the 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 rate here is pretty good, right? Two, three for two. Attacks, exile a card, get some clues. Uh, sorry, Karn again, the murderers. Uh, so yeah, uh, Karn's very reasonable. I think this card so, could see play in standard. There are good Demir decks. There are, like, legendary things that matter, too. Uh, but great limited card. Possible attractive card also, also. Pretty cool. Up next is Leyline of the Guild Pact. Oh my god, folks. I, you want a card that will help you evaluate people's terrible ability to evaluate cards? Uh, this is the one. Leyline of the Guild Pact. I haven't seen a Leyline in a while. This is a Leyline, so it's a 4-man enchantment that can be free if it's in your opening hand. All the green hybrid mana symbols. So, green, 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 and then blue, white, black, or red. Each non-land permanent you control is all colors. All lands are every basic land type, right? So, uh, instant domain, and then all of your things. Uh, that... Not good. Like, yeah, you know, you could have turn one leyline binding. Cool. 
yeah, you can have Sion and have Draco that has all the abilities. Cool. Those aren't good things. Uh, you can't ever build your deck around a card like this because what happens when you don't have the card? You know, <laughs> like, it's like, oh man, well, I didn't draw a ley line, so my deck is totally non functional. You know, we already have fetch lines and triumphs, like getting domains super easy. It's not even a good thing. So, the only thing this card does is it is four green pips for devotion. So, if there's some sort of like crazy all in devotion deck with Nykthos, um, having four green pips for free at the start of the game is is pretty powerful. That said, it's a super high risk, you know, play because obviously you draw this card on any other turn, it's literally blank. So that is a uh, that's a possible thing you can do with this. But again, ley lines are already a huge issue. The only time you want to put a ley line in your deck typically is when it is so powerful, it's worth the risk. Ley line of the void against dredge, ley line of sanctity against burn. In almost all their scenarios, they're never good enough. And uh, four pips, I don't think it's good enough. So that's trap cards, unplayable, unlimited. Uh, probably never be in your deck ever. I just, people on Twitter are so dumb. I'm sorry. <sighs> So that'd be the, the thumbnail for the, uh, the on, I got that. Uh, Lightning Helix returns. Y'all like Lightning Helix, right? Um, this card's great. Now it's in Pioneer, super awesome. It's obviously a great standard card. We're also hitting a kind of a critical mass of burn spells in standard too, uh, where there are a lot of good burn cards in Boros. It could be a thing as well. I would say much here, folks. Lightning Helix is a great card. Great and limited, great constructed. Now it's in Pioneer. Now it's in Storic. Card's good. Love it. Meddling Utes, 5 out of 4, a 4 5 haste. So, pretty good limited stats. Attack with 3 or more creatures, investigate. Great limited card. Uh, phenomenal. Uh, curve Topper, draws cards, good body. Love it. Niv Mizzet, the Guild Pact. Uh, not quite past Niv Mizzets. It'll be dark with um, rocks and mineral formations. Chill out, Bart. We're trying to do a set review. Wooberg for a 6 6, like all Niv Mizzets are. Flying Hexproof for Multicolored is. Not great. Whenever it does combat damage to a player, it deals X damage to any target. The target player draws X cards and you gain X life. Where X is the number of different color pairs among permanents you control that are exactly two colors. That's a really hard thing to get any value out of. Um, so you need to come into play, safely attack, hit your opponent, and you need to have multiple uh, like guild things in play. Uh, worst Niv Midget ever. Uh... I would look forward to casting this card in limited, just because like I like doing stupid shit in limited. But yeah, for the most part, this card is 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 pretty damn bad, and uh, they massacre my boy here. Uh oh. No more lies. No more lies, folks. Manalik is back in standard after many, 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 many years. And Mana League was a huge deal last time it was in standard. And this is better than Mana League in a lot of ways because it exiles a spell as well. Now, obviously, being tied to only blue-white and making colorless lands a bit of a liability is reasonable. You know, this is like a pretty narrow Mana League, but for any blue-white deck in standard and in Pioneer, Stork, this card is phenomenal. The Exile Clause is so good and so relevant. Exile a Grease Fang. Exile um, whatever other card that would go to the graveyard and be really good. Exile Memory Deluge, you know? So powerful, so good, so flexible. We have not seen a good 2 mana counter like this in, 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 since Mana League, I guess, right? You know, we have Make Us Appear now. That card's okay. Uh, but this card is phenomenal. Huge Pioneer card, huge standard card. Uh, it's okay and limited. It's fine. But yeah. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. No more lies. I don't... I don't... I... Damn. Damn. Officious Interrogations next. 2 out of 4, a blue-white instant. It costs blue-white to cast for each target beyond the first. Choose any number of target players. Hashtag commander card. Investigate X times where X is the total number of creatures those players control. Kind of a weird card, because there's obviously diminishing returns on clues. Uh, you know, your first clue is miles better than your 10th clue. Like, if you have 10, 10 clues in play, like, that 10th clue is... You're probably not cracking that one, realistically, you know? So, 
getting a, a bajillion clues is not like the most useful thing ever. Um, and that being said, like two mana investigate X. What does X need to be for the card to be playable? I'm not sure. Like four, five, you know, like, and it's also very, very, uh, very, very slow. Uh, you know, like in a control deck, I cast this and now I'm just like, Four mana draw one card, six mana draw two card, eight mana draw three cards. It's kind of rough, you know. Uh, there is a really cool card in blue uh, that makes all of your artifact abilities cost one less. So that way you only have one, uh, one to crack clues. So I don't know. This is a weird card, you know. Um, it's a very, very slow card draw engine on pure rate. But if you have some way to use the artifacts profitably or to reduce the cost of the clues, it could be, could be good. So maybe a card, you know, I think on rate, this card's pretty bad, but in limited, this card's reasonable, right? You just like investigate four times, draw some cards, whatever. Uh, but yeah, I think this card is going to require a lot of help in Constructed, but could maybe get there, uh, but needs to do a lot of different things. Private Eye. <laughs> The matter for a 3-3, Detective Lord. Uh, what if you draw your second card each turn? A defect detective can't be blocked. Just a good limited card, obviously. Uh, you know, detectives is like, going to be one of the better me mechanics in uh, in limited, I think. Your best, better archetypes. Constructed, I, I don't think there's enough playable detectives. We see this all the time now with no blocks, where it's like, there just aren't enough of each theme to make a deck. So every set that goes by, up, no party deck, up, no landfall deck, up, no magecraft deck, up, no detective deck, because there aren't enough cards for it. Um, you know, so constructed, no. Limited, definitely. Um, it's also, it's important to know it's a 3-3, three, three, which is a decent size also, but yeah. Limited mechanic for sure. Kind of cool. Moving on. Teractos, Patron of Chaos. Six mana, six, six flying trample, or flample as the kids say. Then your end step, opponent may sacrifice two, two non-land, non-token permanents if they don't draw two. I mean, this card's really good. You know, like, it's obviously an insane limited card. I don't know what deck in Constructed would want this card. Uh, you know, it might just draw two immediately, which is kind of cool. So, like, it, it's got an immediate impact, I guess. But six mana is just so much for Constructed. You know, so... I, I doubt this card will find a home on Constructed, but slam dunk, uh, slam dunk limited card for sure. Rakish Scoundrel, this is the Golgari Common Morph card. 3-3 three, three, Death Touch for 3 is fine. When an ETBs or is turned faced up, a creature you control gains Indestructible and then morphs for 6. It's fine. You know, kind of on par with the other ones. Not super great. It's fine, limited common. Relive the Past. This card's sweet. 7 mana for a sorcery. Return an artifact, a land, and a non-aura enchantment from your graveyard to the battlefield. They're all 5-5 five, five elementals. So... Biggest thing, obviously, in Standard is Portal to Phyrexia, uh, which is an insanely powerful card. And you can return that and some other, you know, an ossification and then a land. And they get three five fives also. Really powerful card. Uh, requires some setup. This is a really, really powerful effect. Uh, that being said, seven mana, seven mana is a lot, you know. So I feel like if this card was six mana and only got back an artifact and enchantment, uh, it might be really, really cool. Uh... But yeah, you know, this is a standard format that has Atraxa, Behold the Multiverse, Atali, there are tons of really good seven mana plays. Uh, Camera Classification, whatever. Some other enchantment then, all right? Hi, I'm Jim. Look at the set review. I was like to, to, to do a set review and not read, all right? So, uh, but yeah, uh, I don't know. It, it's a pretty fun card. It looks really cool. That being said, I, I don't think it really has the legs in standard, probably. I'm sure I'm going to try, though, for sure. Definitely an episode of Freshly Brewed. Uh, and then in limited, this card's absolutely bonkers, as long as you can uh, have targets for it, because 3 5 fives is well uh, well good enough. Moving on to Repulsive Mutation. We got our sleeper card, folks. This card's awesome. Blue-green X instant uncommon. Put X plus the most encounters to target creature you control. Then counter up to one target spell, unless its controller pays mana, equal to the greatest power among creatures you control. Forget the X. All right, I think the X counter thing is very, very distracting. Just look at this as blue-green, counter a spell, unless they pay mana to the greatest power among creatures you control. So I have a 4-4 in play. There's a mana leak for 4, right? The X part is just all upside, where if you have a little extra mana, you can pump it up a little more, get a condescend effect, 
Uh, but the reality here is that the floor is blue-green counter for creature in play, which is awesome. Uh, this is a really, really powerful card that scales as well. I think it's kind of like easy to miss because like you focus on the counter thing being kind of awkward. But the floor here is phenomenal. Uh, this card's really, really cool. Cool in like a Merfolk deck, cool in some sort of blue-green beatdown deck, or some, maybe some Bant deck. I don't know exactly, you know. The fact that it's blue and green makes it a little more limited. Uh, but overall, I think this card is, is really, really cool. Kind of stubborn, denial-adjacent, you know, kind of similar kind of card. You play it in your big creature deck, you counter spells, you tempo out, and uh, card's super sweet. Like it a lot. Uh, pretty good limited card, too, I think, because it scales well. Uh, but yeah, I think this card plays well in that, in that blue-green artifact deck in standard for sure. And then, um, yeah, card's really good. Sleeper card, Repulsive Mutation. Rift Burst Hellion, this is the Gruul common flip card, and a very, very good one at that. 6-7, reach for six, for 7, flip over for 6, just good sizing. Just good big boom boom. Rune Brand Juggler, a Rakdos 2-mana two 2-2. Two, two. When it ETBs, suspect up to one creature you control, and then spend 5 mana and sacrifice a suspect to give a creature minus 5, minus 5. So, cool sacrifice card, uh, very expensive, but, you know, realistically the floor is a 2-2 two, two for 2, which is fine. Target your Ravenous Rat, sacrifice it to kill something, kind of cool. Slow, but fine, limited card. Sanguine Savior. This is the black-white entry into the uh, the Morph Common cycle, and my pick for Bomb and Common in the set. The meta for a 2-1 Flying Lifelink is pretty good. Also, Morphs, and then when you unmorph it, you give a creature Lifelink. So, you morph this thing, and then on turn 5 or 6 or whatever, flip it up, up. Give a thing lifelink, attack for, you know, six, gain six life, huge tempo swing, and then a 2-1 lifelink flyer is also pretty great. Uh, I think this card's excellent. Uh, really, really good. Has two power for two power stuff. Uh, being a vampire doesn't really matter, I guess. But, um... I'm a something to yell about, you know. Uh, card's great. Yeah, limited, limited bomb in common. Uh, there are ten commons in multicolor for once. And, uh, yeah, totally swings the math and limited. Uh, love it. Shady Informant, this is the Rakdos common. 5 mana for a 4-2. When it dies, deals 2 to any target, and then has Disguise 4. Uh, pretty cool card, right? You know, you can just die. You morph it in combat, you trade, you kill another 2-2. Two -two. Uh, this is pretty good. I think this is a pretty solid common here. One of the better ones. Soul Search, mana for a Sorcery, Orzov. Opponent reveals their hand, choose an on-land card from it. So Thought sees them with no drawback. And then uh, you exile the card, which is also very relevant too. If a card costs one or less, you get a flying token. So, for the most part, this is always going to be just two mana exiling, castigate, if you will. For all the boomers out there, castigate. Uh, but then occasionally, if you choose a one drop, uh, you get a token, which is kind of cool too. So, um, yeah. I mean, if castigate's playable in standard, which it might not be, this does that effect. This is a much better, um, a much better uh, version of Pilfer, which sees very, very slight fringe play. Uh, good against tracks and friends, so on and so forth. It would be sweet if the one one token was uh, also tied if you missed. So, like, if you just miss completely or whatever, because they have all lands, you get a token, that'd be kind of sweet. But, yeah, reasonable card. Uh, fine limited card. Constructed fringe playable. Summa Sentry. It's better for a 1-3 reach. Whenever a face-down permanent is turned face up, but a counter on this... I'm sorry, a counter on it and a counter on Sentry. Phenomenal limited card. Phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. Uh, constructed... Unless there's some weird morph deck we don't know about, probably not, but great limited card. Once you can flip that first card up, you've gained a ton of value here, and a uh, great draft card. Tessa, Opulent, uh, Ogalark. This is a 2-3 three, three death touch for a 3. Being your end step, investigate for each opponent who lost life this turn. Whenever a clue you control is put into a grave in the battlefield, make a 1-1 one, one flying spirit token only once a turn. Kind of a weird card, because there aren't like a ton of clues in black-white. I guess there kind of are some of them, right? Um... Dies to cut down in standard, unfortunately, which is a huge downside, but pretty good card, right? You know, attack for attack on turn two, play this thing, investigate, and then your clues make my ones. Good card. This card's fine. Uh, this card could be, could be playing constructed for sure. Phenomenal limited card. Fringe constructed player. It's a human. Has death touch. Kind of cool. Ten Street Gossip. This is a great limited card. Four minute for a 4-4 Vigilance. Already very good. Taps to add a red-green to flip cards or play morphs, and that's awesome. Uh, there's a lot of big morphs in red and green. This is an excellent, excellent limited card. Slam dunk first pick. Uh, just excellent. Tulsimer, Midnight's Light. 5 mana for a 3-2 lifelink. Not too great. But when he enters the battlefield, you make Volja, a legendary 5-5 trample wolf. 
One of our wolf we control attacks. If Tulsimer attacked also, target creature your opponent controls blocks the wolf this combat if able. So, insane limited card, obviously. You're hitting a 3 2 lifelink and a 5 5 or 5, which is insane. It has abilities also. Uh, just boom, 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 bomb, bomb, bomb. Crazy limited card. Constructed, I don't really think it gets there, honestly. Uh, you can't even, like, blink it for value because it's a legendary token. Uh, you know, just a 5 5 and a 3 2 lifelink for 5 is not particularly exciting, but yeah, definitely a ridiculous, ridiculous limited card. Treacherous Greed. This is a really, really weird one. I'm simply saying that life uh, finds a way. The Menos Instant. Sack a creature, a dealt damage this turn. Draw three, and then drain for three. Very, very powerful effect, right? But it requires you to hit your opponent. And then diminish your board. Which is what most decks that are hitting their opponent don't want to do. That's weird. You know, so... Three mana draw three, drain for three is pretty powerful, but if you're behind, this card's not going to do anything, you know? Um, it is any damage, so you can, like, you know, Voldair and Epicure your opponent, I suppose, but I don't know, you know? Maybe there's, like, there are a lot of, like, weird flyers in black and white, you know, some little one-drop flyer, you attack with it, hit this thing, and kind of go, but, like, then you're just drawing into more crappy woman flyers, so, <laughs> so, like, is that good? I don't know, honestly. You know, it's a card worth trying for sure. Uh, the power level is pretty good. Um, we'll probably save this card to a new Bruce, I would think. I, I don't know, though. This is the kind of card you got to play with because it is it is weird. Uh, and then Unlimited, this card seems pretty good. You can, like, sneak in a Spirit Token or something like that. But again, kind of weird because if you're behind, it just does actual stone nothing. So, I don't know. Very, very odd card. One of those ones you just got to play with. Tristani, three whispers. It was her. She did it. Selesnia 3 drop 4 4. Pretty good. Uh, 2 mana to give a creature Death Touch. 1 mana to give a creature Vigilance. 3 mana to give a creature Double Strike. It's fine. You know, like, this card, like, 10 years ago would have been, been like, whoa, you know. But, uh, you know, modern day magic, 3 mana 4 4. Eh, you know, it does some stuff, but I don't, I struggle to think of a constructed deck that would want this card. That being said, um, you know, in limited, this card's obviously phenomenal. So, yeah, I don't know. Somewhat Savage Knuckle Blade esque, where it's just sort of like, yeah, it's a 4 4, it's not particularly great, but, you know, I don't know. Great limited card, obviously. Undercover Croc Crocodelf. <laughs> what? Six mana for a 5 5. This is your, this is your Simic Morph common. Does damage to a player investigate disguise for five? This card's okay. Obviously, you get that first hit and you get a, get a clue. It's pretty good. Decent sizing on the morph. It's fine. You know, this is a fine limited common. Urgent Necrop... Ne You're saying it wrong. It's Leviosa. Four mana for an instant. Additional cost, collect evidence X, where X is the total amount of value of the permanence of spell targets. Destroy the one target artifact, creature, enchantment, and planeswalker. Really weird card, right? So, obviously, the ceiling here is insane. You just cast a four mana instant speed, uh, caches of war, which is wild. But you gotta have crap in your graveyard. It's gotta be sized properly to kill your stuff. They gotta have targets for this thing, also. You know, what if they don't have an enchantment in play? What if they don't have an artifact in play? You know, so kind of a weird card. I'd be like a decent one of in constructed, some sort of like one of mid range, like, you know, big card to draw to. But the, uh, the conditions here are very, very real, and this card has a very high chance of being stuck in your hand and being super awkward. So, maybe a one-of, you know, something. Obviously, great great a commander card, obviously. It is, it, is, it is an instant, but, like, if I only kill a creature with this, I am super sad. You know? So, like, it's just a really bad murder. So, I don't know. Uh, great commander card. Fringe, fringe, playable, constructed card. Maybe decent in sideboards, where if your opponent's playing, like, a bunch of tokens... Or a bunch of like cheap artifacts. Like say they have a portable hole, you know, a servo token, uh, I don't know, an soul artifact all in play, and this can kill all of them for like only evidence two or three or whatever. It's kind of cool. So I don't know. Interesting card. Vanifar, Evolved Enigma. Simic 3 4 for 4 rare. Being in combat your turn, you get to cloak a card from your hand or put a counter on each color screen you control. And if it's cloaked from your library, this card would be great. Uh, but cloaking from your hand is very bad. You're just, like, putting a card into play for free but not getting any card advantage. And the counterpart is kind of cool. We have a bunch of uh, 
morphs in play, I guess. But is that constructed playable? I don't think so. Great limited card. Uh, bonkers limited card. Play some morphs, pump them up. But constructed... Eh, not really about it. War Leader's Call. This card's awesome. Glorious Anthem. Impact Tremors. No! Yeah, that's all it is. Three mana for enchantment, Glorious Anthem, and Impact Tremors. Putting these two together is a pretty good effect, honestly. Uh, because Impact Tremors is bad after the fact. Uh, so, like, you get an Anthem after the fact, after the fact too. Is this good enough for Constructed? I don't know. Uh, Glorious Anthem is not great. Um, so, like, this card is... I don't know. It's it's uh, it's fine. It's probably not, like, good enough for Standard unless you're playing a super heavy token deck. Uh, but there are a lot of token things. Sometimes are very good with Adeline, too, with Adeline and uh, Ammon, Ammon Packle or whatever. So, this card could see play. Uh, definitely a cool card. like the design on it a lot. Uh, yeah, I should have called this Glorious Tremors for sure. Uh, yeah, Scrawl of Sive is kind of cool with this also. I like it. Card's cool. Uh, could be a Convoke kind of card, too, maybe. But yeah, card's sweet. Obviously, great limited card. I think it's not a chance to for sure. Wisp Drinker Vampire. Orzhov, 4 mana, 2, 4 flyer. Decent stats. Whatever creature power, 2 or less EDVs under your control. Each opponent loses 1, you gain 1. Phenomenal. And then 7 mana, creature you control, power, 2 or less, gain death, touch, and life, and of turn. Uh, great limited card. Uh, signpost uncommon for uh, for Orzhov and limited. All about the 2 or less stuff. Uh, card's great. Great stats. Great mana sync. Great abilities. Great limited card. World Souls Rage. Another weird one. Red, green, X sorcery. Does X damage to any target. And put X land cards from your hand and or graveyard on the battlefield tapped. Again, more land graveyard stuff, which is kind of peculiar, honestly. And like, if you've got three lands in your bin and you kill a thing and put three lands from your graveyard, it's kind of cool, right? But like, it's kind of slow. So like, I don't know. Although, if you're playing some sort of weird return land deck, this can be your fireball that like wins the game for you. You just like get back 15 lands and fireball them. So like, I don't know. It sort of fits into this like weird deck. Um that's kind of like coming together a little bit, but it is pretty clunky. So, and Limited is fine. It's just a, a bad removal spell, but Constructed, I don't know. We'll see. Yaris, Roar of the Old Gods. We got a 4-4 for 4, 4, 4 Golgari Centaur. Gives your other creatures haste. Whenever one of our face-down creatures you control does common damage to a player, draw a card. Phenomenal. Whenever our face-down creature you control dies, return to the battlefield face down on its own control if it's a permanent card, and then turn it face up. Uh, bonkers, bonkers, Limited card obviously. Uh, just a bunch of great abilities, great sizing. If there's some sort of morph deck in standard, this card will probably be in it. Uh, that being said, there probably won't be, but you know, the stats are there for sure, but definitely a bit limited bomb bomb. Er Wasn't going to change the overlay for five cards. Cease and desist. This is a uh, two mana for an instant exile, two cards from a graveyard. Gain two, draw a card, a little bit of graveyard hate. And then six mana to destroy all artifacts and enchantments. Pretty good sideboard card, obviously. Um, you know, both sides are reasonable. A little clunky, but pretty good. Not a main deck card, but obviously give me a mono green card or a white card or a black card. It's kind of cute. So, kind of cool. Also, these are big cards for collect evidence, too, because they count as both sides. Uh, so, they have a huge mana value. Flotsam and Jetsam. Uh, two mana for mill, three cards, investigate. Uh, not particularly exciting, honestly. Or Jetsam is 6 mana for a sorcery. Each opponent mills 3. Then you may cast a spell from each opponent's graveyard without paying its mana cost. If a spell casts, so you put into revert exile instead. That's kind of busted. So you can just cast their Atraxa. 6 mana is a lot, obviously, but it's kind of interesting, honestly. Fuss. Bother? Fuss and bother? Is that, is that, is that a saying? <laughs> they added a fuss, put in a counter on each accurate you control. It's a pretty good limited card. And then bother is create 3 Thopter tokens. Uh, with Flying, Surveil 2, also a pretty good limited card. You know, just limited card, is what it is. Hustle and Bustle, one mana, creature attacks or blocks is turn if able. That's a pretty bad card, but as a modal card, not the worst. And then Bustle is six mana uh, Overrun. That's pretty good. It's a good limited card. Six mana Overrun's pretty sick. And then occasionally you'll, you'll hustle them and just like kill their creature. Push and Pull, uh, destroy target's half creature for two is obviously a good limited card. And then Pull, two target cards, creature... But still graveyard under your control, they gain haste, they die in the turn. That's pretty powerful, actually. Pull. You can like return two things and sneak attack them, like a and stuff, but for the most part, kind of, you know, eh. That's it. That's it for multicolor. We got no more lies as our best in show. We've got repulsive mutation as our sleeper card. 
Leon of the Guilt Packs, our trap card, and our bomb in common is Sanguine Saver. That was a long one, folks. Everyone take a break. Grab a Snickers. Grab some water. We've got Carlos next. Love you all. Like, comment, subscribe, support the content.